Uh, I'm pleased to be here. Uh, Dr. Garrett asked me to come and talk to you about community college funding. Uh, now, everything I say today, I have written out for you. So, uh, you can just uh, listen rather than take a whole lot of notes and be prepared to ask questions. You're a pressure professor. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you three things. Uh, you have one. It's called the uh, Organization Hunter. And I'll be talking largely about, about that because that is the basis for uh, community college funding. That un onion that you see there. Unfortunately, the copy machine that I went to didn't have, it wasn't a color copy. That's the way it looks in color. So you have that. Uh, I'm going to give you a uh, copy of my resume just for your information purposes. And then I'm going to give you the text version I'm going to talk about. All right? Okay. Well, let me uh, just say a few words about me that's not on the file. I spent my entire professional life in higher education. I started as a business officer accountant at Tuskegee Institute quite a few years ago. Uh, I spent 17 years at Tuskegee, advancing from accountant to senior accountant to business manager. I left uh, Tuskegee and went to Morgan State University, Tuskegee private, Morgan State public. And I went there as the uh, chief financial officer. And I was the chief financial officer there for four and a half years. Uh, when that a period of experience ended, I took a new adventure and became a college president for the first time. I moved to upstate New York, became the president of Schenectady County Community College in uh, New York. There for almost four years. And I was lured to come to Dallas to be the president of Bishop College. Private, started with black, financially troubled. <laughs> And I was there for three years. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and when that ended, uh, I was invited uh, to uh, come to the uh, community college uh, district. I was interviewed for two positions that were open at the time, the president of El Centro and the president of Eastfield. And they selected me to be the president of El Centro. <laughs> and I was there for 20 years and was preparing to uh, retire. In fact, my third attempt to retire, and uh, they asked me to stay around a little longer, and I was named the chancellor for the Southern College uh, District. So that's me uh, in, 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 in okay? Correct. You want to talk about funding, community college funding. Well, let's just talk about college funding in general. First, with private colleges. Private colleges and universities receive that funding to support their educational thrust from four particular areas, starting with tuition and fees, like Dallas Baptist. Tuition and fees in the private institution is the primary source of revenue to support the institution. And then that is followed by gifts and grants. Uh, Dallas Baptist, for example, has been very, very fortunate in receiving support from uh, the philanthropic community and then there is a third source that's rather important for private institutions, that's endowment. Uh, presidents, boards of trustees uh, seek out philanthropists who are willing to give them funding for specific purposes, and it's usually in large amounts. And what the institution does is invest those funds in what is called the endowment account. And the revenue interest earned from the endowment is used for operations. And a fourth uh, source of income in private institutions is what we call related income. And that is from your auxiliary enterprises and other things that generate money. And that is for the private institution. Now with public colleges and uh, universities, it's a little bit more expanded. The first source is always tuition and fees. But it is not the major feature or factor, as is true with private colleges. And then there is what we call local property taxes. That is 
extremely important. We'll talk about local property taxes. Then there is this third area that sometimes causes controversy. That is state appropriations. State appropriations to support uh, the state's public institutions. And then there is fourth area. It's called uh, gifts and grants. Okay. So those are the uh, sources of revenue for both private and public. Now let's talk specifically about community colleges. Tuition fees. A community college's board of trustees has the responsibility of setting the institution's tuition and tax structure. Do that every budget year. And that sometimes causes a little bit of controversy, but that's the basis for determining what will be the tuition level, the tuition, the amount that you pay. Uh, it's based on what the trustees decide as the uh, tuition and fee structure. Now, the tuition and fee revenue is considered to be what we call institutional funds. That is used for the general support of the uh, institution. And those funds are not designated by the state local board does that, so tuition fee. And then you have local property taxes. Public institution also uh, gets uh, revenue based on local property tax. So each community college is required by law to levy what we call ad valorem taxes. So uh, if you are a property owner in uh, Dallas County, the uh, Union College County of Tarrant County, where we have lived. When you get your tax bill, you're going to see something down there, very small, but it is the allocation for the uh, community college for your particular uh, locality. And I'm always feeling, Dr. Lassen, AD, DA, and it's two words, ad valorium. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> two words. <laughs> Two words. It, it, it's in my notes here, by the way. <laughs> Add my Add my tax. All right. Now then, a board may also issue bonds. Bonds are typically issued, for the most part, for construction of facilities. And I'll talk about it. A, a major bond issue that I was responsible for during my tenure as chancellor. And then that third year, state appropriations, state appropriations. Let me read this to you. This is, uh, this is just right the kidding. So the, Texas, the Texas legislature appropriates what are called general revenue bonds to public community colleges. The legislature meets every two years. And as the legislature prepares to come into session, uh, presidents and chancellors are down there lobbying to get as much as they can from the state. In Texas, all of the community colleges have, shall we say, a lobbying organization. It's called the Texas Association of Community Colleges. All of the Texas community colleges are part of what we call TACC, Texas Association of College. And TACC is the, shall we say, everyday active voice for community colleges. They interact with legislatures, which with legislators on a, a regular uh, basis. Well, when back in 1983, funding for community colleges from the state of Texas amounted to roughly 83% of the budget for community colleges. 83% came from the state. Well, that changed uh, over the years. And in uh, 2011, during my tenure as chancellor, the state appropriation to community colleges was down to 23%. So that's a market change. So I would just pose and ask you a question based on what you've heard so far. If state appropriation had been 83%, they are now at 23%. What does that mean? That means What's the impact of that? That means 
that the money is going to have to come from somewhere else and the tuition is going to go up. <laughs> you need to reduce the salary of the chancellor. <laughs>
to um, hear about how we work through this $154 million smash from the government, okay? The governor slashed the $154 million. And this was a part of an effort on his part to address a shortfall in state, in state resources for that budget year. So it wasn't that he was taking aim uh, exclusively at community colleges. Everybody was coming. University of Texas, and they screamed loudly because of their size. When he did this cutting business, I became the leading advocate to cause him to change his mind. The leading advocate because the Dallas County Community College District happens to be, sometimes fortunately, sometimes unfortunately, mm -hmm. the largest community college district among the 50 in the state of Texas. So after some intense lobbying and the presentation of this three-pronged model that I shared with you, where we wanted to show the governor that we were prepared to be accountable. And if we perform well, should we not be funded appropriately? And so after all of this lobbying and yelling and so forth, uh, he did uh, approve the restoration of some of the money. For the Dallas Community Colleges, it represented the loss of $30 million. When the state allocates funding for public institutions, it's for a two-year period. So we lost $12 million for the first year of the biennium and $18 million for the second year of the biennium. All right. Now then, we have to have a deal with this $12 million cut. Are we going to raise tuition? No. Are we going to raise local taxes? No. Those were quick no, too quick no. So it meant that we had to find a way to accommodate the loss of $12 million without causing any undue harm for the seven colleges in the Dallas Community College District. And that's how this chart came into being. 